Hello, welcome again to Holy Spirit 30 Day 28, 30 days of revelation, of knowledge, of light, of um, transformation, metamorphosis, and spiritual mastery. And um, I'm taking the last few days to answer questions that you have asked because I believe that questions within questions, um, I mean, smart questions are so powerful, you know, in helping us. Um, um, to get all that um, God has for us. All right, so there's a question here from day 23, and that's on the utterance gift. And um, this is from Phoebe Sanusi, um, 8892. Okay, and I'm hoping to answer about two or three questions today. He says, so my question is, how can we be filled with the Spirit? Beautiful question. All right, the upper room experience was the beginning of the ministry of the disciples, and so it is almost like you can have the Holy Spirit and still not be empowered and have that boldness. I hope it makes sense. Um, I'm trying to make sense of your question. I'm not sure I fully understand it, but I'm just going to answer generally. Um, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there are two separate definite experiences that um, you must have as a believer. And um, it's called the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. And what do I mean by the Spirit within? That's the work of the Holy Spirit at redemption and salvation to recreate you into a living mobile temple for God. And there are several scriptures that speaks about this. For example, Jesus said to the woman at the well in John the fourth chapter, he says that, listen, if you drink of this water, you shall never test again. It shall be inside you a well of living water springing to everlasting life. That is the spirit within. Um, with, with joy shall you draw water, Isaiah, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. That is the spirit within. Now, what is the function of the spirit within? Um, that it's the spirit within that builds character, and it's the spirit within that brings us direction and guidance. So um, I'm saved now. The spirit within, that's the spirit in a measure inside my heart, is what helps me build character, and that's what helps me with direction um, and instructions in my life. Now, um, can we see that as well in the life of the apostles? Absolutely, yes. In John chapter 20, verse 22, in John chapter 20, verse 22, the Bible says, And when he had said this, this is Jesus, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now, these were the apostles, these were the disciples. He said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. But I hope you know this is completely different from Acts chapter 1, verse 8 where it says, tarry till you be endued with power from an eye after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He said, you shall receive power after, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So there's a first a, a experience where it says, receive you the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit within, all right? Uh, and that's when they became born again. That's when the disciples, the apostles, actually became born again. But then later on, he said to them, he said, I want you to go and wait in Jerusalem. He says, and then you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That second experience is what we call the Spirit upon, or some other people call it the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's when, um, you know, because what you received in a measure, which is a well, and a well basically serves you. But then in John chapter 7, Jesus says that if any man thirst, he says, let him come and drink of me. Out of his belly shall flow rivers. Rivers don't serve you alone. Rivers serve others. So there is that second experience in God where the Holy Spirit fills you to overflowing and that experience is for service, all right? So the first experience is for life and for character, the spirit within. The spirit upon is for service. And so it is possible. Uh, we see that with Jesus as well. Um, the Bible tells us after he returned from the Jordan that he was full of the Holy Spirit. But then the Bible tells us after he returned from the wilderness, he was full of power. So yes, you can be full of the Spirit and not be full of power. All right? So there's a total distinction between both of them. Now, the Spirit within is for character and for direction, for guidance. The Spirit upon is for service and power, power for service. And there are two different experiences. Now, how do we get full of the Holy Spirit? And how do we get full of power? There are two different things. The Bible tells us how to be full of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul actually gives us the key there. He says, these are the things that you do 
to be full of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be being filled. The Greek word there, be filled in the King James, but in the Greek it says, be being filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. How many of you remember me saying utterance? So utterance is the way you get full of the Spirit. All right, so I pray much in the Spirit. I get full of the Holy Ghost. I sing and I worship, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, and I mean, and when you look at psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things, all of these things are under the purview of the gift of prophecy. So I'm expressing myself there and I get full of the Holy Spirit. In fact, some of you actually feel it physically in your body. You sense the presence of God and all the rest. But you know, you can sense, I don't know if you've been into a worship meeting before, where you sense the presence of God so strong. In fact, people begin to cry and all of the rest, but there is no miracle. And you have that strong presence. And I know a lot of ministers have wondered, how come there's such a strong presence where it does not translate into the miraculous? Because being full of the Spirit is different from being full of power. Now, the key to being full of power is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You tarry in Jerusalem. You wait there. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and power flows out. So tarrying is the key to power. Tar so there are two different things. Tarrying is the key to power. I can get full of the Holy Spirit on a continuous basis. And I need it. Because that fullness of the Spirit is what strengthens, helps me build character. Is what It's in that fullness that I get direction and guidance. But if I want power for service, and then there has to be a shot in the door behind closed doors to spend time to wait upon the Lord. And so that power for service, that power for boldness and all the rest, uh, all of that comes from tarrying. All right. So I hope I answered your question. I want to take another question here. This is from day 21. Um, what the Holy Spirit will do with you, part three. All right. Um, so this is Olua Funto Jesano. Okay. And she says, thank you for this series, Pastor Ayo. Please, I have a question. Does what we put on our mind while praying in the Spirit have any effect on our prayers, especially when we are not praying for anything in particular? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Now, you have to understand that praying in the Spirit is not empty prayer. Now, your mind is unfruitful, but it's not empty prayer. Let me read you a scripture, and then you get how this works. Look at what it says in verse 25 of Romans chapter 8. It says that, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. So your mind is unfruitful here, actually. It says, But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings we cannot be uttered. Now, what is this? How, how does he present words to God? Look at verse 27. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So here is the principle I want you to know. It. The Holy Spirit searches your heart, and then he helps you present that information in sanctified language and the best protocol, best manner and protocol possible to God. So the Holy Spirit is not praying apart from you. The Holy Spirit is helping you. The Holy Spirit is praying with you. And so the abundance of light and truth that is within your spirit is what determines what he can present to God. And that's why I always tell people that two people can be praying in tongues and one person's prayer is generating more result than the other person. You know why? When the Holy Spirit searches the heart of this person and that person, he finds more content within their heart that he can use to present unto God uh, and to generate results in that place. So, yes, um, does what we put our mind on while praying in spirit affect our prayers? Absolutely. So I tell people, for example, when you're praying in the spirit, don't if you're not careful, your mind begins to roam. So I tell people, anchor your mind on a scripture. I mean, you could be praying in the spirit, just worshiping God. Anchor your mind on a psalm. You'll be praying in the spirit about an issue. Anchor your mind on a scripture so that you're not praying in the spirit and then you're, you're repairing your car or you're, you're taking your kids to school or you're pressing your clothes and all the rest. And that really happens when people are praying in the spirit. So anchor your mind on the scripture so that your mind does not wander away. Hallelujah. Now, I, so Olua Kunto Sano, I hope... Um, I, I was able to answer that question there. 
All right. Um, maybe I take one more question here. Um, all right. So I'm just going to take this question because I think quite a lot of questions like that together. Uh, but I'm taking it from Fola Shade Julumi seven eight zero one, and I've seen a few questions around this. But I'll use um, your question to address this issue. And I know I've addressed it in one of the videos, but it says, why is it that even after praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and more continuous prayer, one can still speak in tongues? Um, and I, I think that the major thing there is a um, wrong teaching or no teaching. That's usually where this stems from. First things first is that um, the Holy Spirit is the gift of God given. So we are not trying to get the Holy Spirit. We're simply here to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, praying in tongues is not um, um, is the consequence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I feel like usually f where, where the major issue comes from is the, um, um, the, the, the questions, unanswered questions in our minds that brings doubt into our hearts and our minds. Now, usually the first and most important question that people are asking always is... Um, you know, um, how am I sure that what I am saying is from God? I've answered this before, but I think it's worth answering again. How am I sure that what um, I am saying is from God? How am I sure I'm not saying rubbish and all the rest? How am I sure that um, what, what I'm asking is not, I'm not making a mistake? I'm not, you know, people even say things like, how am I sure this is not a demonic to tongue um, and all of the rest? Now, I'm going to read us one scripture here that um, answers that question clearly for us. And you have to make a decision between believing your mind or believing the word. And that's usually, that, that's the point where the switch happens. All right, in Luke chapter 11, verse 11, it says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a fish? Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if you ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil, if you being so evil, it says, know how to give good gifts to your children. Observe the switch now. It says, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So if, if my son asks me for bread and I don't give him a stone, if I, if I ask, him, ask me for egg and I don't give him scorpion, Jesus says, how preposterous is it to think that you're going to ask for the Holy Spirit and then... God would allow a demon spirit fill you up. Because I've had such a theology before where be careful so that you're not accommodated by a devil and all the rest. Those are, those are doctrines of devils. What Jesus says is this, is that if the natural man who is so evil in and of himself will not allow his child go with, it, um, with evil, I mean, would, would answer the child in love, how much more will... And so and I'm, I'm asking you today, how much more will God um, 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 give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. The next issue then is, oh, but um, how do I speak in tongues? Acts chapter 2. And I'm, and I'm basically reading you scripture so that you understand this. Acts chapter 2. It says, verse 3, you can read from verse 1. It says, but from verse 3, they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. It sat upon each of them. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So listen to this. It says, God filled them with the Holy Spirit, but they began to speak. It's not the Holy Spirit that spoke. Usually what happens many a time is that people want the Holy Spirit to speak. They say, I'm waiting for him to get me to speak. No. It says, the Holy Ghost gave them utterance, but they spoke. So you have to open your mouth and speak. But what you're speaking is the utterance of the Spirit. And this is a faith transaction. You have to believe, based on Luke 11, 11 down to 13 that we read, you have to believe that when you ask for the Holy Spirit, what God gives you is the Holy Spirit. And you don't need to qualify for the Holy Spirit. Jesus has qualified you for the Holy Spirit. Once you're born again, you're a candidate for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to qualify. You don't need to say, oh God, please. You don't beg for the Holy Spirit. Is a gift given. And here's, it's as simple as this. I stretch out my phone to you and I say, have my phone. You don't beg me for the phone. You don't say, please, I need to. No, all you do is you stretch out your hands and you receive the phone. And that's exactly what you do with the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, so what happens is this, is that you open your mouth in faith and you speak the words that comes to you 
Oh yes, your mind is going to fight you to say, wow, this is rubbish you are saying. But hear this, based on the word of God, God has to stop being God for you to say rubbish. I need you to understand that God has to stop being God for you to say rubbish. It's that simple. Somebody says, but how, how about what I'm saying? It does not make sense. Well, the Bible says clearly that if you're praying or speaking in the spirit, what you're saying will not make sense. So it's fine that you're not making human sense. The scripture is very clear on that. And I think we can just make a practice of this. You don't need to pray one hour. In one second, you can be full of the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. What the Bible says, if after the Acts, book of Acts, the Bible says hands were laid in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, after Acts chapter 2, every other account, hands were laid on the people and they got food of the Holy Spirit and they speak. So right now, I'm laying my hands on you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I decree and I declare, be filled with the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Now close your eyes and where you are sitting this is me. Heavenly Father, I receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness in my heart. And now I open my mouth by faith and I speak in other tongues as he has granted me utterance. Now open your mouth. Stop speaking in English. Stop speaking in your known tongue and start speaking in the Spirit. That's the language of the Spirit. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You may think, well, but I'm saying the same thing over and over again. When you learned your language, you started with one syllable, with one word. Fluency comes with practice. That's the infilling of the Holy Spirit. All right, go ahead and keep speaking in other tongues there. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Congratulations. God bless you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you made it again today. Tomorrow, I'll answer as many more questions as, as I, I can answer. God bless you. See you tomorrow.